Books strewn here have remained unused for quite some time now. And uh, dust has piled over the years. For example, this book here titled The Black Journey in the Africana session where we're in right now, as you can see, is full of dusts and webs. It was last taken out of the library 24th of February 1932. That was when this book was last taken out of this library. Right inside this superb work of architecture in the Macmillan Memorial Library is William Northrop Macmillan's bust above the fireplace, looking sternly down at all who come in the library through the frontispice. And right before it are gigantic elephant tusks mounted on wooden stands. It's not clear, however, whether these tusks were here when the library was first launched. I'm not entirely sure of their provenance, like meaning, I mean, a national museum's Specialists can tell us exactly how old they are because apparently you can usually tell by something on the task how old the elephant was by the time it was dying. But yes, they're real. They also do point to that time in the you know 40s, 50s, 20s. Many of the colonialists loved to hunt, and they hunted very many of our wild animals. So Macmillan ha hunted lions a lot. He kept a pet lion, and his farm was always advertised as a place where you could get all of the big five. When William Macmillan first came to the country, he bought a piece of land in Thika, the current place where Juja sits. In fact, it was his farm. He named it Juja. In fact, he named Juja after two lion gods, Ju and Ja. When he, because he came from West Africa and he was always afraid of the water and he had this fear that he'd die in the water. So he went to... Um, a specialist, traditional specialist, and asked them to give him some, something that would protect him from the water. So he was given two amulets, two small lions. One was called Ju, the other one Ja. And he was told, if these two lions never touch water, you will live. So as soon as he got to Nairobi and he bought the 10,000 acres of land that were Juja, he then named them in honor of these two gods that, that um, kept him safe. Mm. Yeah, these are, these are catalog cards. Mm -hmm. Um, because the, the way the library system worked in the 80s and the 90s was every single book that sat on a shelf had a catalog card with some information about it. Yeah? So you see you've got um, Dictionary of Economics and Business and then it's got the special accession number right there. But these, and that is actually why mm -hmm. the, 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 these are information that says that the Macmillan Memorial Library has over 400,000 objects. Based on the because when you look at these numbers, they will add up to 400,000. But then some of these books were, have just, are not there. Cannot be accounted for. Yes, so when, when Bookbank created the digital catalog in 2019, mm -hmm. we managed to catalog 137, 705 items. These included books, and newspapers. So as we now walk this way, we're now coming into, there's another lion for you. And uh, here is now, this is the children's section, which is named after Mabel Rushton. Mabel Rushton was a good friend of Lady Macmillan. The reason uh, Northrop Macmillan and Lucy are called Sir and Lady is because during the First World War, he did a lot to help the British here in, in Kenya. So he was, he was honored by the British um, and, and named a sir, and she was named a lady. And then he did naturalize as a Briton after the First World War. Digitization is ongoing here. We find plenty of newspaper that is in line for the process. And many of these, of, many of these are out of print. We are starting with the out of print newspapers and then working our way to... Um, what you, is still accessible. Mm, so, so, like the Mombasa mm -hmm. Times is not printed anymore. Ah. Um, Mombasa Times. And you find that most other people don't, most other libraries don't even have copies of their, of their newspapers. This is from 1954. So, we've started from very early 
We've started from the 20s, moved to the 30s, I believe now we're in the 40s. Stacks and stacks of the old newspapers, some in print, some already out of print. This one is the leader. Mm -hmm. This is from... This is the reference section because it's, a, it's an archive that should never leave the library. The leader of British East Africa, see that date? 1918. And you, you really, it's difficult to find most of these in anywhere else on the continent. Some of these copies have been digitized, but they sit on Western archives. They don't sit on archives that are accessible from here. And, and I, I always find them very interesting to read because, one, how they talk about Africans is interesting very problematic. But also, it's a very important way of <laughs> tracing that step from colonialism happens and then how are the colonized living, the colonizers, and then around you know the late 40s, emergency period is coming up in the early 50s, and you begin to see the papers are changing, especially mm -hmm. the Indian papers, like the colonial times. These ones are now the ones that are pro- independence and so are reporting the story differently from say how the standard will report the story and I think that's really creating access for these archives is very important not just because that's what a library should do but because it's, it's documenting and archiving history. To get a clear picture of what is meant by digitization we move to the actual scene in the underground basement of the library. This is where digitization happens and we usually have, so we take the photographs from here, and then we enter all the metadata from upstairs. Laura is one of our research interns, and she, she takes a lot of photos. So if you guys are not here, this is, it's a full dark room, that's why you can see curtains. We use our light boxes, we place the, the gazette or the newspaper right there, and then take individual images of the entire volume. And then, the team upstairs now writes all the necessary information about that page so that this page is findable on our website. So if anybody is looking for, you know, 1946 land laws, they should be able to find them in the archive. To the main floor of the library, and from here we go up a winding staircase with portraits of African soldiers dated 1946, complete with their names. So all these guys fought in the second division of the King's African Rifles for East Africa. We don't know how they came here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully as we continue digitizing, we'll come across a letter or somewhere that explains who... How they ended up yes. in this place. But these libraries do have a very strong connection with the King's African Rifles men. Like, the uniqueness of this building is that this is the only building protected by a specific act of parliament. I'm talking about the Macmillan Memorial Library Act, CAP 217 of 1938. Here is where pictures go after being captured in the basement. We meet Lavin and her colleagues busy on their computers. After you take an image, you need to color correct it somewhat, crop it a bit. That's what she's doing. And then her work partner, Travis, is now entering metadata about every single page that was taken, her photos taken of downstairs. So taking photos is the easiest part of this work. Metadata is the hardest. Upstairs appears to have more personal collections of Lucy Macmillan, including old typewriters, paintings of her husband and friends, as well as other regional paintings purchased from auctions. Also here is a collection of books, some of which have remained untouched for ages. Most of these are first collections. You've got some Washington Irving's work. This is an almost full collection of the complete writings of Theodore Roosevelt, which he gifted to the library. So for a lover of old books like you, this is the room for you. From here, we head straight to the Africana section, where from here, see, there's literature on Africans, not written by Africans, yet looking down upon the natives of the African continent. And I couldn't wait to find out the truth. So I picked a random book, and my guide was clearly asked by the contents. 
Yeah, so actually this is a book on the myth of the Bagre people by Jack Goody. So just to maybe read a line or two in the book. It says, I did not go to Africa to seek out a simple society, nor indeed did I find one. The material tools, of course, were elementary. With the aid of an iron hoe, the Lodoga gained a living from the poor tropical soils of the savannah country of West Africa. How? <laughs> Who has the right to say that? Well, elementary tools. On our way back downstairs through the beautiful atrium is a beautiful view of the city. And Right here you see this faces Interesting directly thing. to the city hall. Ah. So imagine 1931. Mm -hmm. Most buildings here are one are built out of Nairobi bluestone. You have the Bank of India, you've got the CFC building, you have Standard Chartered Bank, because this is all of Wabera Street. Um, all the older buildings are all thicker bluestone, and then you have this facing all the essential services, if you will, you know? All City Hall, bank, you're going to have your tea at the Stanley, mm -hmm. and then you'll have your church. And the church on the fire. All Saints. Ah. And there's even one, one of the windows mm -hmm. at All Saints was uh, gifted by Lucy and Northrop Macmillan, ah. one of the stained glass windows. Interesting. So Such a beautiful view of the city, even as we speak. Deep in the building, peeling paint and dusty shelves do little to keep serious readers away. And on a normal day, you'll find library users here making the maximum of their time in the hidden treasure of knowledge. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, most libraries countrywide have been forced to shut down to reduce interaction between its members. But now with the digitization of materials here in the second oldest library in Kenya after the safe bin Salim in Mombasa, the membership will now be able to access the materials from anywhere without necessarily having to come down to this place physically. Reporting for Switch TV from the Makbila Memorial Library in Nairobi, I'm David Kagina.